This lecture is for Biology 22, General Zoology under Professor Ana Santiago of UP Manila. The reproductive system is composed of structures that aid in the perpetuation of a species through reproduction. Reproduction is defined as the process in which new individuals are produced from parent individuals. Reproduction is one important attribute of life. As individuals grow, develop, and eventually cease to live, the process of reproduction ensures the persistence of a population for generations. Reproduction in the animal kingdom may occur in two ways. A sexual reproduction, wherein a single individual divides into two offspring, and sexual reproduction, which involves the fusion of gametes or sex cells from male and female parents. We shall first examine the methods by which animals undergo a sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction is considered to be a primitive type of reproduction since there is conservation of genetic material from parent to offspring. Invertebrates exhibit this type of reproduction by means of fission, budding, fragmentation, parthenogenesis, and schizogony. Fission is where an organism separates into two individual offspring. The most common type of fission is observed in unicellular organisms whereby the plasma membrane divides in the same manner in which a cell of a multicellular organism divides during mitotic cytokinesis. Fission may occur in various planes depending on the organism. For instance, protozoan ciliates such as paramecium and malantidium divide along the transverse or cross-sectional plane. Flatworms such as the free living dugesia undergo fission along the longitudinal plane. And dinoflagellates, such as ceratium, that constitute the zooplankton on the surface of the seas and oceans, divide along the diagonal plane. Another method of asexual reproduction is budding, that is, the creation of a small protuberance or bud from a parent individual that can develop into an independent organism. Buds usually separate from the parent organisms, such as in the case of Baker's yeast Saccharomyces, but may occasionally remain on the parent and establish a colony, such as Hydra. Fragmentation is another form of asexual reproduction wherein a parent organism loses body parts or fragments into separate parts. Each fragment can regenerate the missing structures and develop into independent organisms. This is exhibited by certain nidarians, flatworms, and echinoderms. Based on the schematic example presented in this slide, a sea anemone divides into three fragments that soon later become three separate sea anemones. Parthenogenesis is a kind of a sexual reproduction that involves the development of individuals from mature eggs that are unfertilized. This type of reproduction can be observed in colonial insects such as ants, wasps, and bees. That is, a mature egg, even without fertilization by the sperm, will undergo cleavage and develop into a different organism. Schizogony is a modified version of fission, wherein an individual undergoes multiple nuclear division, such as in this slide, followed by multiple cytoplasmic divisions. Parasitic protozoans such as the malaria parasite Plasmodium exhibit this kind of reproduction in their life cycle. We now proceed to sexual reproduction, which is considered to be more evolved than asexual reproduction due to genetic variation from parent to offspring. This genetic variation can be attributed to gametogenesis, which we discussed in our past lecture on the meiotic cell division. Mature egg and sperm cells from separate male and female organisms fuse through the process of fertilization. Fertilization is a reproductive event that is exhibited by all vertebrates and may occur externally or internally with respect to the female parent. External fertilization is found in lower vertebrates and invertebrates, where the goal is to produce a high number of offspring. Internal fertilization requires genitals such as intermittent organs in males that facilitates sperm transfer from the male to the female. Females, on the other hand, require structures that will receive the sperm, allow for fertilization to take place, and nourish the fetus during gestation. 
Internal fertilization is found in higher vertebrates such as reptiles, birds, and mammals that prioritize the fitness and adaptability of the offspring. Let us examine the anatomy of the human male and female reproductive systems. Presented in this slide are the lateral view of the male reproductive system and the mid-sagittal section of a typical female reproductive system. The excretory system is located in the same region as the reproductive system, and in the case of the male reproductive tract, the excretory and reproductive systems tend to share the urethra. That is why these two systems are merged together as the urogenital system by virtue of duct sharing. We shall first study the human male reproductive tract. The male gonad is the testis, where mature sperm cells are produced. The path of sperm is from the seminiferous tubules of the testis that merge and empty into the epididymis towards the vas deferens or ductus deferens and into the prostatic urethra. The prostate gland is an enlarged region of the male urethra that secretes an alkaline fluid that contributes to seminal fluid. Seminal vesicles are outpocketings of the vas deferens that secrete the nutrient-rich component of semen. The slightly alkaline prostatic and seminal vesicle secretions protect the mature sperm from the acidic pH of the female vaginal canal during copulation. The bulbourethral gland or cowper's gland is another accessory male reproductive gland. Upon erection prior to ejaculation, the bulbourethral gland secretes a clear fluid that cleanses the penile urethra in preparation for sperm travel. A scrutiny of the cross-section of an erect male penis reveals three main bodies, the corpora cavernosa that contain the deep penile artery, and the corpus spongioso, which houses the penile urethra. The inset on the lower right presents a section of the testis showing two seminiferous tubules. In between adjacent seminiferous tubules, interstitial tissue mainly composed of Leydig cells secrete the androgen testosterone. A magnified schematic of the seminiferous tubule in this section reveals that the immature stages of sperm undergoing various stages of meiosis are found at the periphery of the tubules. Mature sperm are located near the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. Notice that the mature sperm cells are devoid of cytoplasmic material and organelles. The head contains DNA, the neck contains mitochondria, and the tail or flagellum is composed of a 9 plus 2 microtubule configuration. The abundant mitochondria at the neck region of a mature spermatocyte provides the ATP to power flagellar movement. This slide shows a frontal section of the human female reproductive system. The mature egg is produced by the ovary and is expelled into the siloam towards the infundibulum of the fallopian tube, also known as the uterine tube, during the process of ovulation. The mature egg stays within the fallopian tube until mature sperm fertilizes it. After fertilization, the zygote travels to the uterus and implants itself where it will develop into the fetus. The collar or entry into the uterus is the cervix and that is where mature sperm carried by seminal fluid enters the body of the uterus. Sperm entry into the female reproductive tract is facilitated by the penetration of the male penis into the vaginal canal. Going back to the uterus, it is noteworthy to mention that it is composed of three layers, namely the endometrium, which is expelled during menstruation, the myometrium, which is mainly made up of smooth muscle, and the perimetrium, which is the outermost covering. The ovary, fallopian tube, and uterus are suspended by the broad ligament. In vertebrate anatomy, the mesovarium of the ovary, mesosalpinx of the fallopian tube, and the mesometrium of the uterus constitute the entire broad ligament. The round ligament connects the tip or fundus of the uterus to the ventral body wall. The suspensory ligament of the ovary contains the blood supply and drainage of the ovaries. A section of the ovary presents a schema of egg cell development. 
A primary follicle is an immature egg cell or oogonium surrounded by follicle cells. Remember in our discussion of oogenesis, primary germ cells such as oogonia undergo meiosis 1 and halts until puberty where meiosis 2 is completed. A completely mature follicle is known as a graphian follicle containing a mature oocyte and typically a stalk known as the cumulus oophorus and a fluid-filled cavity called the antrum. During ovulation, that is, upon release of a mature oocyte from the ovary, the remaining follicle cells become an endocrine structure called the corpus luteum or yellow body. The corpus luteum secretes progesterone and estrogen that maintains the endometrium in preparation for the implantation of a zygote. After secretion of hormones, it progresses into the corpus albicans or white body within the ovary. The stroma is the cellular matrix of the ovary.